Hey guys, I uh, just wanted to go over a little bit of what we went over uh, before talking about the halogenation of alkanes. And um, last time I kind of went over the initiation, propagation, and termination steps, but I wanted to kind of get touch on the differences between chlorination and bromination and or what, what determine, like what uh, the products will be in each case. Um, first of all, I wanted to talk about why, or actually, you know, I'll show you what will happen in any certain situation. So we're going to start off with CH3, CH3. And just like in the last video, uh, actually, oh, crud. Just in the, just like in the last video, uh, we're gonna show. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna show each step. I'm just gonna show um, what products we're gonna get in this case. So we add one and then okay. 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 Yeah, just the H and then seal right here. Now, <coughs> we would expect that the ratio would be a three to one ratio because if you think about it, there are um, six different um, one. There are six different uh, one prime hydrogens, which would be easier for the chlorine to strip off, and there are two um, different. Um, two prime hydrogens uh, and just like thinking about statistically speaking there's going to be more chances of it stripping off one of these hydrogens that are sticking off out here rather than the inside ones but the observed ratio is actually a one to one ratio now uh, the increase in um, in, substi uh, in the substitution of each hydrogen actually increases its ease of being abstracted so that's the reason why we observe a one-to-one -one ratio in this scenario. However, that cannot be said the same for bromine. Um, when we do reactions with bromine, um, actually I can show you the difference in reactivity. Um, so if we look at the change in enthalpy um, for uh, chlorine and bromine, we'll find that chlorine has a change in enthalpy of minus 30 kilocalories per mole and that <coughs> bromine oh, this change in heat is equal to minus 13 kilocalories per mole um, <coughs> as you can see the bromine is not nearly as reactive um, as the chlorine because this negative sign means that it's it's actually giving off energy in this reaction and um, as you can see like this is why whenever you see a, uh, a reaction going going through chlorine's just gonna pretty much go wherever wherever it gets to and that's why you get a reaction mixture but with bromine you're always gonna get um, a substitution on the more substituted carbon and and it's always gonna be like basically if you were to do the same reaction we just did sorry you'll get this instead Uh, you'll still get the uh, you'll still get both isomers. However, you're gonna get 99% of this and 1% of this, and it's just because this is a lot easier to strip off uh, the hydrogen, and the bromine will stick to it. Okay, so um, I want to do a couple of examples, but um, just want to remind you guys that the um, energy 
the heat of energy um, is going to be lower for chlorine than it is for bromine so it's going to be more likely to strip off hydrogen so I just wanted to give a couple of examples of what is what will happen in that event so we'll start off with chlorine I'll show you guys show you guys a um, quick example of chlorine okay now um, as we discussed earlier, chlorine is going to just go wherever wherever it feels the need to go, wherever it wants to. It's going to strip off whatever hydrogen happens to be near it, and so you'll get all these isomers. Sorry if you guys hear my little brother in the background. He's having issues. Alright, um, <clears throat> so now I'll go ahead and do an example. Okay, yeah. Do you guys get do you guys see this? The chlorine will since this is a symmetrical molecule, you'll only have to do the one side of it. And so the chlorine will just go to wherever it wants. So Alright, let's do this example. Okay, so this one's, they put this one in the book to try to trick you. Um, it's pretty obvious what they're trying to get you to do. And they want you, what they're trying to see is if you understand that this carbon is a quaternary carbon. So this one is four prime. Now, although we did say that the the highest, the, the easiest to remove carbon is the one that's more substituted. Well, I'm going to go ahead and draw this out with all the hydrogens attached. And if you, um, if you don't want to watch this part of the video, I don't care. You can skip it. Um, but some people need to know this stuff. So. So drawing all the hydrogens on here and all the substituents on there correctly is very important in understanding oh my goodness, I cannot draw. It's very important in understanding what is actually getting stripped off in this case. Now as you can see, a quaternary carbon, there's no hydrogen there for you to strip off, so don't fall into that trap on test day. Um, there's this perfectly fine tertiary carbon that has this hydrogen and that's the one that you're going to want to go for so your product in this case will be alright there you go alright you guys have a great day